In example 3, we want to find a global extreme point, namely the maximum profit for a firm. We're given a cost function. If we're given the price, we can always find the revenue function. And so profit then is simply revenue minus cost. So we've gone through that process and found our profit function. Other important information we have is that the maximum output of our firm is 110 units. That tells us the domain of our profit function. So the domain for a pi is the closed interval of 0 to 110. Our domain is a closed interval. Our function is a cubic function. It's bounded over that interval. And as we know, it's a differentiable function. So we've got something to work with here. Let's look at the graph of the revenue and cost functions to get an idea of what we're doing. The cost function is the, the cubic function that we're familiar with from lecture 3. The revenue function is linear. The difference between revenue and cost is profit. So we're looking at the vertical distance between revenue and cost. We want to find the maximum value. Let's recap on what we need to find a global extreme point. Well, first of all, the extreme value theorem tells us that if we have a closed and bounded interval, which we have, then a global maximum and a global minimum will exist. To find that global maximum and minimum, we go through three steps. We find the stationary points in the interval, A, B. Here we use our first order conditions. Once we have the stationary points, we evaluate our function F at the stationary points and the endpoints, A and B. Thirdly, we select the largest value and the smallest value as the maximum and minimum respectively, or in this case we're after the maximum. We have our profit function. Our first step is to find the stationary points. Then we need the first order conditions, namely that the first derivative pi prime q is equal to zero. Pi prime q is equal to, will be minus 0 0.06 q squared plus 6 q minus 54. Set that equal to 0. We have a quadratic there. We could evaluate that directly using our quadratic formula or simplify it slightly. Now we have slightly simpler values to plug into our quadratic formula. Here we have our quadratic formula. We can substitute in our values. a equals 1, b equals minus 100, c is equal to 900. We can do that calculation. We get 100 plus or minus 80 on 2. That implies that Q1 is equal to 10 and Q2 is equal to 90. So we have two stationary points. Our next step is to determine which one, if any of these two, is the global maximum. We've found two internal stationary points we know through the extreme value theorem that there is a maximum on the closed and bounded interval, 0 to 110. A step two then is to evaluate our function, pi q, at the two stationary points and at 0 and 110, the endpoints of our interval. So we have these four possible points for a global maximum, 0, 10, 90, and 110. Now we will evaluate pi q at those points. It's useful to draw up a little table, so we have q and pi q. When q equals 0, what we're left with are the fixed costs. So pi q will be minus 500. We evaluate pi q when q equals 10. That's equal to minus 760. And similarly for q equals 90, there we have 4360. And finally, for q equals 110, and that's equal to 3,240. Step 3, our final step, is to choose the largest amount and to write up our conclusions. Let's see if we can squeeze those conclusions into the bottom of the screen here. We've found our maximum point and written our conclusion, and now we're done.